Hey everyone, and welcome back to Better Computer. My name is Matt, and in today's video, I'm going to take you through a quick look at Proton Pass, which is a brand new password manager that just came out hours after I made a video about 1Password, how much I liked a lot of the features of 1Password. And Proton Pass actually looks really good. Um, I will spoil basically the whole video here. Here are my pros and cons. Basically, the pros solid pricing, really good pricing for Proton Pass. It's open source. <laughs> It has good privacy, has can create fake emails for you really easily, and has easy imports. Um, I was able to import my entire one password vault very easily. And no idea how exports will go. You can export your data, but how easily it imports to other services, I don't know yet. Cons, no shared vaults. So you can't share a vault with another person. You can create multiple vaults for yourself, so like a personal one and a work one, but you can't share them with other people. Um, there's no share links, lots of typos in this, uh, no share links. So if you want to give someone a password, uh, you can't send them a link like you can with one password. You have to just send them the password in iMessage or whatever. No pass keys support. One password has this in beta. Uh, there's no Mac or Windows apps. So there's no native apps. It lives entirely in the browser on your desktop. On iPhone and iPad, there is an app and Android as well that'll integrate with the system, autofill and everything. There's no Safari desktop support. So it only works in Chromium browsers and Firefox right now. Uh, you can kind of see down here. Uh, and then dark mode is just low contrast. Um, and it doesn't support nearly as many file types. So my software licenses couldn't come in here. Not all of my documents could come in. It's really mostly for usernames and passwords right now. But let's kind of get into it. Uh, the pricing, I'll just sit on real quick. Uh, there's a free plan for unlimited logins on limited devices, um, but it's only usernames and passwords. There's no 2FA codes, they get no pass keys, and you can do 10 kind of hide my email aliases, which we'll show in a second. If you want all the functionality, you can need Pass Plus, which is currently $12 per year, and I think it's going to be about four times that once it's actually officially released. Or you, if you use Proton Limited, if you use their other email documents like file storage, uh, that's it's just part of the plan. So if you're paying $10 a month for that, you can just automatically have it. You already, already have this. So let's take a look at Sketch. Um, I'm gonna use Sketch to demo everything about how this works. Uh, and Sketch is a good example because I already have an account here. I already have my info, info saved. So on page load, it shows me this. I can go ahead and autofill my sketch username and password and sign in. Now, this is a 2FA account for me, so I need to fill in the 2FA code. And unfortunately, this is a little clunky in the current form. So it doesn't just autofill for me or anything. Like, it's not on my clipboard. I have to actually load this, copy it, and then go back to the page, paste it in, and then I'm fine. But it's not as seamless as it maybe could be. Um, for comparison, let's actually load up ARC where I have one password loaded, and it's kind of the same experience here. Autofill's username and password for me, but you're going to, it's a blink and you miss it thing, but it's going to automatically detect the 2FA code on the next page and fill it in for me. So I'm just going to hit sign in. And yeah, it was barely on screen. But as soon as it saw the 2FA field, it filled in my six digit code and did it for me, and I didn't have to do a thing. So I think one uh, password is a little better here, but. You know, it's not the end of the world, and I would assume this is just a 1.0 release. This will get better. Um, let's go ahead to the create account page, and you can see uh, how create a new account would work. So on the email field, you can see the little icon. I can use the email that I have just in my Proton account as the email, or I can hide my email. And in this case, it's going to alias create a fake email account for me. Um, and there you go. So it's going to be this random thing, although it does have the name of the service there, which is kind of cool. Uh, but anyway, this is the email. It's going to redirect to my actual email address. So I'll get the emails. It'll look totally normal to me. But if I uh, tell uh, Proton Pass to delete this uh, email, no emails will get to me ever again who use this. So that's cool. Let's create a password. And there you go. So that's kind of all that you'd expect. And once I, once I finished signing up, it would save it as a new uh, login for Sketch. Now, one other thing that I think is worth noting that is makes kind of one password really elevated to me. Um, I know this is about Proton Pass, but apps. So if I want to sign into an app, like here's Sketch the desktop app, and I want to sign in, how would I do that? Well, in one password, maybe you'd go up to the menu bar, maybe you'd launch the app. It's kind of inconvenient in Proton Pass because I actually have to go to my browser, then I have to go here, and then I have to search for Sketch, and then I have to find it, and like it's kind of and a copy and paste from there. It's kind of annoying. 1Password has this awesome system level autofill, so I can just hit a keyboard shortcut and it's going to detect that Sketch is open. It sees that I have a Sketch login. I can open in the browser or if I arrow over, I can autofill. And now it's actually going to autofill in the app, which is awesome. 
And I think it doesn't automatically do the 2FA here, but I think if I paste, oh, it's the wrong code. So that's a little annoying, but I can bring it up again, copy the one-time password. So it's not 100% perfect, but it is nice to be able to sign into apps um, or to find their serial numbers or whatever. So if you have like a license to an app, um, I think if I bring up iStat menus, for example, let's see, I'm going to register. And what's what are my credentials? Well, I can go here, iStat, here it is. Uh, and then I can copy the registered email. There we go. And bring it up again. Oops, copy the license key. There we go, register, and we're good. So I didn't have to open a new app. I was just able to do it straight from this kind of system-wide interface, which I really, really like. So um, anyway, not a video about 1Password, so I don't want to get too far down that road. But yeah, um, if you're looking mostly for usernames and passwords, if that's mostly what you want, 2FA is here, of course, as well, but it's not quite as seamless as 1Password. And if you're looking for something that's affordable, it's definitely cheaper than 1Password. 1Password cost me $5 a month for a family plan. Uh, this would just be a dollar a month equivalent for the, over the course of the year, but it's not as full featured. Um, and again, I, you can't store as many things in here. Um, in 1Password, you can save anything you want, secure notes, secure documents, uh, you can do software licenses, all sorts of SSH keys. There's all sorts of things in 1Password. So I would say right now, if functionality is your big thing, I think 1Password still has a significant edge here. But if you're just looking for a simple password manager that's secure, uh, one of the big things about ProtonPass that I like over things like LastPass or um, mostly LastPass, I guess, is that there's absolutely no way for Proton uh, to be able to get your passwords. You are the only one who has access to them using a combination of your, um, you know, account password and everything. So they can't access your passwords even if they wanted to, which is great. Um, it's open source. So if you like open source, um, it's able to be audited. You can check it. You can have a, it's like, look what other people say about it. Um, that's pretty rad. And the interface honestly is just nice. <laughs> like it's definitely nicer than uh, what you get from like, Bitwarden or LastPass or I think 1Password is actually pretty good. Um, in the browser, at least as long as you're not using Safari, it seems. But yeah, I, I think there's good things to like about Proton uh, Pass. But um, yeah, I think I, I find it something I can recommend if you have kind of relatively basic needs and don't want to spend as much money. Um, again, 1Password is probably what I would still suggest if you need more things and want to do more with your password manager. But that's it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.